Hello, David. Hello. Uh, can you start by introducing yourself? Sure. Um, my name is David Straddle, and I uh, have owned uh, Dashwood Books for the past 11 years. And it's uh, a bookstore in downtown New York, and it specializes in photography, although we have a little bit of uh, drawing as well. And um, I guess the specialty beyond photography is that we host a lot of events, we also publish, but we, we kind of, in the best books we do really, um, we stock are kind of imported from around the world, so we have a lot of strong Japanese books, um, European books, things that aren't generally distributed. Mm -hmm. That's probably what we do best with. So I'm always trying to introduce to a range of clients things that they haven't seen before, mm -hmm. which I think is that's kind of why I opened the store because there actually wasn't a bookstore that specialized in photography back then. There is, there's a few other ones that have, um, that, that there are now. But I, th I felt that there was a bit, there used to be um, about well, 30 years ago, maybe, maybe even more, um, uh, a store in Soho called Photographer's Place, and a lot which I used to come to when I was a kid. I've been in New York for about thirty years, and um, it closed down I think twenty years ago. And there was a sort of you know gap in the in in there was something missing there in that a lot of people in New York I think feel that they have access to sort of everything, mm -hmm. and. Yeah, except a, for the rest of the world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there was a lot of... I, I kind of had the idea to open the store, not just from Photographer's Place, but I went to Japan and I went to a few of these kind of very specialized stores and they had these incredi this incredible printed material. It doesn't really relate to zines so mm -hmm. much. It was more about artist books and really small publishers that did these really sort of, um, you know, exotic and extraordinary books. And mm -hmm. I just felt that... There are a lot of people in New York that would be excited to see that. And those Japanese photographers, for example, um, did some of them uh, started by self-publishing themselves or publish uh, self-published yeah, uh, after? Them, I think. Yeah, I think. I mean, when you go back to the Provoke period, you know, mm -hmm. the late sixties, mid mid to late sixties, you know, Daida Moriyama, all the all those guys, they and Araki, their first projects were all self-published. I don't know where they got that idea from. Mm, yeah, so, I never even thought about that. <laughs> But um, so maybe it goes back further than that. I think I don't know. I've never come across self-published books much older than mm -hmm. the '60s from from Japan. But but Phil might know. <laughs> and so, how did you came to <coughs> have you know the, these little boxes uh, with zines? Right. You, did, you didn't have them uh, in the beginning. No, not at all. No, I didn't really know anything about the zine world at all. Um, and I when I opened the store. It wasn't long until people turned up and they said, would you like to look at my zine? And it was sort of a, it was a really fun way of um, meeting artists, talking about their work. Um, but I soon discovered that um, some of them were definitely better than others. <laughs> so we had, we started a program so where we take the books on consignment because I couldn't afford to buy everything. Obviously, I wasn't sure there was so much of it. So they really became... A moment of okay, am I really going to stock this because we have to catalog it and it's mm. going to take time? And maybe you were you were unsure if there were people who would yeah, buy this type of stuff. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And then I then I sort of figured out that it was a kind of it was a nice way with enga engaging with artists, and there was a sort of community. It was a nice way of sort of broadening this community. People mm -hmm. would come in the store and look for things. So I started started a program of consigning, and now I have somewhere actually runs that program with me and we, mm -hmm. we probably get 30 books a week, mm -hmm. 30 zines a week, which we go through and decide what we're going mm -hmm. to stock. And then we kind of turn it, you kind of have to turn it over quite a lot because people want to kind of see. Yeah. Things. And they get damaged really fast. So yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we have a system where we have a sample and then we put okay. everything in plastic bags. Okay. Yeah. We got it. We got it. <laughs> but, um, but it was, and then actually, one of the first zine projects that I, I also published too. So, one of the first zine projects that I did, which kind of took it to another level, maybe, was with um, someone who I met through the store, Ari Makopoulos, mm -hmm. who has become a really good friend. I've done lots of work with him, and he's well known in the zine world. So, he introduced me to a lot of the zines that he had done. Mm -hmm. 
and then I kind of I had the idea to do this project that we called Anywhere, where we did Anyway, where we did um, one zine a week for a year, and you could wow. kind of buy this box at the end of the year with 52 zines. We did a 53rd zine, and you got it on subscription. So every week you would come in and look at your new zine and we put it in the box. Mm -hmm. And then we did extra ones. So, so we just had lots of kids coming in looking at mm -hmm. looking at these things that were costing between eight and sixteen dollars. So it brought a, a younger crowd in. It brought a shop? younger crowd. I mean we had quite a young crowd anyway, but it was just really nice to see people coming in looking at this thing, looking for the new thing. Mm -hmm. And it was a it was sort of about how as an artist you kind of process all these different ideas. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, a bit like Atlas or something like that, like, but but more um, under a deadline. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he was pulling his hair out halfway mm -hmm. through the year. But it was, yeah. but it wasn't so. just about work. He was, it wasn't diaristic, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, who buys the those zines? Are they the same client that buys the book? Or mm, no, not really. A lot of younger young young people. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of also what's nice about. I also do vintage books too, so we have a big variety of things. We'll have imported books from Japan, Germany, and France. So we have kind of a range of people who come in and buy that. Then there's collectors, if you like, or people who are even looking for books for inspiration in the fashion and advertising world, who's background. And then we have like kids from school. Who, mm -hmm. So it's sort of, in a way, it sounds a bit, but in a way, it's. It's so that there's something that everyone can afford. Mm -hmm. So that it has a, and then also you might you also might have Richard Prince standing there rubbing shoulders with somebody who doesn't know who Richard Prince is, mm -hmm. you know. But they <laughs> might be like just enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of a, it's really just a place that's try and make the place just a place for enthusiasts mm -hmm. rather than. You sell to institutions too. Yeah, a little bit. And, yeah, and are they interested in this this kind of? Uh... I wish they were more interested. Yeah, I've got one. I've got one institution that is, but I always I always thought it would be really a dream to have, you know, someone who I could just buy books for, buy zines for, and mm -hmm. just you know, not yeah, you know, some... of a certain level, and at the end of the year they would just catalog them, mm -hmm. and just yeah. say that was two thousand. Yeah, curate a selection yeah. and. Uh... and it, I mean, that was something that we touched on when we talked yesterday was that it's a very, um, or the other day, was that, you know, there isn't really, yeah, you know, it's a history that you're writing right now. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and you're never, I mean, maybe in a few years, I don't see how you could ever have such a sort of overview of a historical sense mm -hmm. of what zines are, because there's so few of some of them mm -hmm. that you'd never get them all, whoever you are. Mm -hmm. So it's really just about your personal interaction with a certain Mm -hmm. with a certain crowd mm -hmm. and so as i told you my background is uh, uh, more uh, in the artist book uh, yeah. department and uh, uh, i don't know much about um, photo books and and is there specific about um, something specific about um, photo zines uh, that are different from other type of, uh, of zines um yeah i think that well that they tend to be Broad, but there are a lot of less um, conceptual ones, mm -hmm. and then you have this. It's, you know, there, you have this sort of. You know, one of the de one of the problems about collecting these things or, or, or about having them available is that they fall into all these categories. You get these sort of, mm. you know, party scenes where people are photographing <laughs> their girlfriend, and you know, mm. and so there's and a lot of repetition. Point, their point and shoot. Mm -hmm. and, they're skating and, mm -hmm. and there is a lot of rep and they're kind of youthful life as if that's that alone makes it interesting yeah. but it's kind of it but it falls into a, there's a lot of repetition a lot of patterns mm -hmm. so i always kind of think well sometimes it's sort of nice to find a really great example of mm -hmm. this this represents that kind okay. of scene mm -hmm. but it needs to have some other level to interest me really like some some it's produced really well. There's a there's a use of mm -hmm. graphics that's unusual. There's there's just some kind of love and attention that's taken it a little 
further. Mm -hmm. Is that what you selected? Uh, things that are representative of uh, the zines that you not sell? Really, really. I just <laughs> that, kind of, that's what you have right now. So I, it's yeah, yeah, exactly. There are a few things here, like you know, and there's a couple of things. Well, these are, these are books that we publish. So what's this? This is yeah. This is like a, a girl called Raquel Nav, and she you... yeah she photographed. This is just photographs of her her life pre uh, before having a baby, mm -hmm. so her wild life. She's an ex model, but it's really nicely produced, I think. So that one, this one's a bit battered up, but this is by. So this is a good example. I mean, one of the reasons I do the zines is mm -hmm. as well is that I get to kind of filter out and find these kind of odd, interesting talents. Mm -hmm. And I've gone on with Nick, for instance. Nick Seffi, he, these are photographs, self-portraits that he did. And he's someone that used to come in the store. He used to work with Terry, Terry Richardson. And then I, so I met him then, right at the beginning. And then I ended up, he's an American kid with, um, from India. So, but he didn't grow up in India. He grew up in, in, in the States, but he goes back to New Delhi every year. And he was fake, taking all these Photographs of street kids in New Delhi, which sounds like, you know, for every photojournalist of mm. the world has always mm. done this. But he was doing it in such a in-your-face kind of way and without any of that sort of journalistic and shyness about mm -hmm. it. So he, it was really fun to look at that work. He had, like, literally had pictures of, like, some dad, like, poking his <laughs> son on the ground with a big stick <laughs> and laughing. And it was, you know, it was, like, really... Or like outrageous photographs, mm. but he, you know, he saw, he knew who these people were, so he was engaging it in a really interesting way, and, and so I did actually uh, a little z sort of offset printed zine, so it's not really a zine, um, in a bigger number with him, and I'm working on doing a much bigger project on all of his India work. So, and mm. I've done that with, I've published books with, yeah, half a dozen people who I've just met from mm -hmm. them showing their, their scenes. I did one with this kid called Daifu Motoyuku, a, a really interesting Japanese photographer who photographed his family, and we went on to do a, a book of that. But I found it originally as a black and white zine in Japan that mm -hmm. had zines mates. Okay. And then I found out that what was actually in colour, and we, we did a little book of that. Mm -hmm. Can you show us the other one that yeah. you grabbed? I think this one is from Brazil. Uh -huh. It's a good rude one. And then, uh, oh yeah, this is Sergey. This kid's good. This guy's yeah. from, I don't know if you know him. This I is know a, him. I interviewed yeah. him. <laughs> this, is, this is a really quite, I think that's quite an old one of his. Oh, that's a collaboration yeah. with yeah. Chris Millick and yeah. Quentin and then, Chambry. I don't know if you kind of define this as a zine because it's done, it's not self-published technically. Mm -hmm. But this is with, and this is someone I don't know if you've spoken to, but Benjamin from Neves. Not yet. But he's, he's great. You know him. Mm -hmm. So Knees were really one of the one of the companies that you saw that really did these mm -hmm. really elevated scenes, mm -hmm. beautifully produced, but very humble. And I thought this was one of the nicest ones they did. This was um, a collaboration uh, with Eric Steinbrenner, Steinbrecher, um, and it's photographs of I think it's Chinese. Uh, like photographs of chi of of the display to sell Chinese plates in a in mm -hmm. a in a restaurant with drawings on top. Okay. So that's really beautifully done. This was a self public. This is a zine from Stacy Kranitz, who um, like, does all these photographs of um, all these kids in I think like North Virginia, uh, West Virginia. So these are just sort of things I literally had in the box right now, and I kind of turn them over all the time. And then, this is kind of interesting, because then you see um, these two Japanese scenes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they're just immediately sort of so polished. Compared very to, compared precise, to the other yeah. Ones, it's very, <laughs> you know, it's like a very low-fi thing, and they probably didn't spend a lot of money doing it, but it's just, there's a sort of level of mm -hmm. polish and finish and... Mm -hmm. Precision. And precision to mm -hmm. them, which is another which is another thing that I like about books in general. But I think it's really very true in scenes is that 
when you see the, the books and zines, it really kind of represents something. It's really emblematic of a certain culture at a certain time. Mm -hmm. And that's to do with, you know, there's a certain design aesthetic. Like if you see, if you look at like lots of, lots of Dutch photo books, this might be more about photo books, but mm -hmm. when you look at Dutch photo books, they kind of have this rough, quirky quality to them. Um, and that's very much about very practical people, the Dutch, and they kind of like to do squeeze as much as, you know, they like to, they don't, they don't want to overspend on production. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, for me, it's that, that's interesting. And then you kind of get, not that you get insights into their culture, but they just have, it, the aesthetic value comes out of a, out of a, another set of values. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about uh, some things that you published? Uh... Uh, yeah, well, I can show you these three. These are just, this is part of a new series that I've been um, publishing in the last couple of years. Um, but kind of like based on the, like novellas that I've got a few more of them up here. It started off with, you probably recognize that kind of aesthetic from France. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Was it the Gall Gallemonde? And I think a few people have done that idea, but so it started with that one. That was a project with Jason Poland. It was always going to be a drawing book because one of the things I noticed with the photo world was I wanted to, I, there was, I think there is in France and there probably is in, in Switzerland and it certainly is in Japan, but there really isn't any place where people can go and look at a lot of drawing mm. and illustrators. And I kind of wanted to have not just photo books, but also have that community because I, I actually, I, I really like the way that um, illustrators kind of relate. I feel that in the same way, my background was in photojournalism, and I feel that a lot of the illustrators are sort of had the same attitude mm -hmm. that some of those photojournalists do. They mm -hmm. kind of are committed to do this. It's the way they mm -hmm. engage with the world. They have to testify. Yeah, <laughs> whatever it is, standing on some street corner making mm -hmm. this movie. Mm -hmm. So Jason's one of those people, and this is a project that, a little part of a project that he did, he expanded and did a bigger book this year, which was called Everybody in New York City, where he endeavored to, to, to draw every single person in New York City. He did, I think, I think he's up to about 18,000 people, but he'll obviously never get there, but that's not the idea. So he's this was, this was just, a, <laughs> this was just um, one month, I think May, five mm -hmm. years ago. So that was the idea. Okay. And then we did another one with another illustrator called Hugo Guinness, where he photographed, I think it's the other way around here. Yeah. Oh. He photographed, um, oh, he didn't, he drew um, all these animals from like 20 second sketches that he did from the internet one winter. Where it's sort of like going around the world. And then this is Stefan Marx, who you know, mm -hmm. who likes to sit in the viewing section at Hamburg Airport and draw all the commercial airlines. So that was something. And then this is actually the first one we did as photography with Lele from um, okay. the newsstand. So this was a series of news that he had done. And we kind of, it's funny because we we were trying, we, we did them as risographs and um, we actually had to use a set of profile of inks that came from watercolors to get this kind of unreal look to them. So that was like a fun project. So I'll continue doing this project. Hello. Kim. Hey. David. She sent me down, should I go back up? Yeah, would you? Bye-bye, see you later. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Can, yeah, no problem. Um, just uh, to finish then, uh, can you tell us about that latest project that you just published with the Tabi Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So we did, um, you know, every year I'll do a couple of these smaller books. I'm also doing a set of, I'm going to try and, I mean, it's uh, hard to find the time to do these things, but we do a lot of book launches and when we do the book launches, I'm going to do like maybe a little zine of a hundred copies by that artist mm -hmm. that's available just at the, at the launch. Um, so that's something that's an ongoing thing. But then in addition to that, we'll do maybe two bigger projects every year. So the project we just did with Toby Mott was, who's Toby Mott's a guy who's about my age who grew up in London and has probably the biggest collection of punk ephemera and which kind of moved over to a lot of, um, skinhead ephemera and street fashion stuff. So it's album covers, buttons, flyers, posters, all that stuff. Thousands and thousands of pieces. So 
And and the book we just did um, called Showboat is about sexuality, sexual mores, and how it influenced punk and vice versa from 1972 to the present day. The old the biggest book I've done, with nearly nearly 400 pages. Yeah. And cool. we launched that as a New York book, New York art book. Cool. Great. Um, is there something you want to add? No, that's pretty about it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>